pretty strong current. So we're uh, still here at the Little Sioux. Beautiful day. As you can see, the dogs were playing and no, no, don't come after me. Wet dogs. Oh, they're gonna, they're gonna come and shake off next to me, I bet you. Nope, okay, good. It's a camera, guys. It's not a fetch. It. <laughs> they thought I was gonna throw it for them. Throw the DJI in for them to chase. No, it's not a fetching stick, bud. Anyway. We'll catch you guys further down the trail. I got something to share a little later down the way. Got a squall moving in over yonder. Might get a little moist around here. Hey, greetings, it's Fred in Alaska. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, <laughs> I haven't been able to keep up on a video every couple days. There's just been way too much background stuff going on. Anyway, um, what I wanted to share with you today comes from Bernadette, known as Bernie. Uh, approximately, it's been 50 years. It's been a long time. Um, she had a homestead at one point with... Uh, her past husband who she was a, a widower at the time of this incident so the way it went down was is her husband would commercial salmon fish to offset the the cost of remote living and trying to make a homestead going well many years ago um she lost her husband in a fishing accident and so she was kind of left this homestead you know with eight dogs you know, uh, they didn't have chickens or anything like that. They just had sled dogs, basically. And it was to commute back and forth for, you know, their water supply, hunting, and all that kind of stuff. Now, um, she was a much younger woman then, of course. And she's still in the throes of mourning. You know, uh, she, she was having a really rough go of it. Um... She was pregnant at the time, but miscarried due to the stress of losing her husband, right? So she, she was not in the best place. And, you know, she had mentioned that she was at her most vulnerable point when these incidences started occurring, which bothers me because it's not the first time I've heard it, right? <laughs> so it started off with small, like harassments and she didn't know what was going on so it started off with dogs uh two of her dogs went missing um the chains were snapped and she thought they just got into a fight with a black bear or something or some other bear and they broke chains and ran off and something came of it right and so you know things that she was easily dismissing as life in the wilds of alaska and so a few more weeks go on there's other stuff going on uh piles of brush that were piled up by her husband at one point were scattered one morning and she made mention several times that a lot of things were happening but she was in the throes of depression and mourning that she was just dismissing it offhand not even taking critical thinking time or none of it just oh wind blew the brush and something ran through maybe a moose with its antlers was rubbing against it or whatever grant you dogs didn't make a noise and which is odd because the dogs would always bark at the you know at moose or whatever but again she she wasn't in her right space as far as paying attention as she should you know and so a few more weeks go by and you know it's it's salmon season and she has people of course donating fish for her because you know she just lost a baby lost her husband going through it right so the neighbors that were you know 5 10 12 miles away or whatever they they were looking out as best they could and she had processed all the salmon and had it in the smokehouse right and she, you know she was tending to it daily and one morning she wakes up to dogs yelping okay so she, they had eight they're down to six she gets up to this yelping and goes outside to tell him to knock it off because there was a couple of dogs that were fighting for dominance, basically, um, since 
the other two went missing, which were the two dominant dogs in that little pack, right? So these other two had been at it, and she thought it was just them doing that again. Well, when she goes outside, she sees what she thought was a very large man at the time holding one of the dogs. She yells, hey, let go of my dog, and this thing turns and just walks away nonchalant, carrying the dog. The dog was obviously deceased, and just walks off into the brush like she didn't exist and so she was just shocked by it and she thought maybe well shit am i losing my mind like did that just happen kind of situation right so she retreats back into the house and she's contemplating well i i need someone's help i don't know what the hell that thing is but i need someone's help right so she it's she doesn't know what to do at the moment so she decides she's gonna stay inside keep an eye out and she got her husband's rifle uh she hadn't even thought about guns the whole time he had been gone or whatever even though he told her and taught her how to use it and everything like that well it so happens her husband had a 4570 right lever action old marlin so she went and got that got the ammo for it loaded it up and uh had it by the door now she went out and did her smoking stuff for her salmon she's processing it doing her thing and she made a specific point to take those guts and go dump them down at the river, you know, which was a quarter mile away. Uh, she had the gun inside, right inside the door. And she, because she's not used to it and didn't really want to have to use it, she kind of just left it alone and had it nearby just in case, right? Because she wasn't thinking Harry Man when she saw this large man walk off with her dog again she's going through a lot emotionally so she was just like you know i don't want to shoot a neighbor or someone that i didn't recognize in a moment that may have been helping me out and i didn't even know it or something you know just trying to dismiss it she goes and dumps this bucket of salmon carcasses you know just flayed out you know salmon or whatever and when she does that she hears weird huffing but it's not like anywhere near she said she could hear it back up on a ridge just above her house this weird huffing sound and she thought bear she was like oh that's that's a really really big bear so she drops her bucket and hauls ass back to the cabin gets inside grabs a rifle and all the dogs were in their little houses they normally with bears they would be outside of their houses barking unless the bear came close and they'd retreat inside and harass the bear or whatever right they never stop barking at a bear whatever this was they weren't barking they all retreated in their houses right so she doesn't know what to do uh she she listens for a while that huffing noise stops the dogs come back out of their houses things calm down she sets the rifle down and goes and tends to her smokehouse now as she's tending to the smokehouse she hears her dogs start growling real real loud but it was echoing from inside their little dog houses right so she thought it was odd because they were just all outside of their houses she steps into the smokehouse less than two minutes and they're making all this noise from inside their individual dog houses so she sticks her head out of the smokehouse and she doesn't see anything it's just quiet so she gets this eerie feeling of being watched and retreats back to the house after shutting the door real quick to her smokehouse and she gets the house grabs a rifle comes back out with a rifle and standing there a minute kind of looking around just feeling very out of her own skin she said she was scared but she didn't know of what she said she went over to her smokehouse and opened some of the vent doors on the sides you know to uh, where this you know fish didn't get too smoky and so she was tending to that while being aware of what's going on around her and trying not to feel like she's losing her mind because she was chalking a lot of this up to stress you're over exaggerating this because of that you're over exaggerating this because of this and, and whatnot right because she's missing dogs you know and there's stuff she's dismissing that she freely admits she shouldn't have been but it was just too much at the time so when she gets the little vent doors open and stuff she said she retreated back into the house set the rifle up against the inside of the door left the door wide open and sat on the four little steps that that came down from the cabin 
she said as she was sitting there, you know, she just started talking out loud to her deceased husband, you know, basically, you know, putting it out there. Hey, what do I do? I don't know what to do. I think maybe I should leave here. You know, there's nothing here for me. It's too hard, you know, and, and stuff like this. Now, you got to remember, this is 50 years ago. It's, it's, been a, it's been a while. Now, as she is doing this and, and talking out loud, she hears voices off in the distance off to her left which would be down towards the river from the front of this cabin and she thought maybe neighbors neighbors are coming and she goes oh okay well maybe i'll go and you know greet them you know and she was thinking you know she was thinking happy thoughts like oh Maybe my husband in spirit sent some relatives to come visit or something, you know, because, you know, she was thinking, well, I should have heard a skiff or something, but she didn't. She just heard murmuring off in the distance. She thought nothing of it, and she did, however, grab the rifle because of everything that was going on and feeling watched. She felt unsafe, so she grabbed the rifle and walks down the trail back to where she just a little bit ago dumped the fish guts, right? into the water of course she didn't dump them on the ground but when she gets there uh the bucket was gone um she saw right where she had dropped all the the guts and stuff it there it was like a little bit of an eddy so the current hadn't swept it all away but she noticed that uh because there's no one down there of course she she looks down in the water and sees that the actual uh, flayed out salmon themselves not necessarily the guts and stuff but those were all missing right and so she's standing there looking around trying to figure out where the murmuring was coming from that she heard that drew her down there and as she's doing so she's holding this gun and, and she said the gun was bigger than her you know she's just a little you know short at the baskin lady and uh so she decides she'll look around and start hollering out hey i'm over here i'm over here right you know, this is Bernie, this is Bernie, yada, yada. No one's responding. And then she hears murmuring back towards her cabin, and she just thought, what the heck? You know, there's only one trail, and I didn't hear anybody going by me. So immediately she got very, very paranoid, and she starts walking back down the trail. And, you know, she, she said as she was walking, she was trying not to think about bad stuff. She was just trying to think that, you know, happy thoughts, you know, keep the clouds away kind of kind of mentality. And she said the closer she got, the harder it was. And she said just as she was coming through the brush on the trail where it opens up and, you know, you could see, you know, where they had cut down trees and all that stuff. And they had the dog houses and the smokehouse and stuff. She was walking up and there's just a short little trail up to the steps of the cabin. She said when she got to that little break off from the, the trail that ran forward because she had the smokehouse off to her left and the short little run to the stairs off to her right and the dog houses in front of her, she said as she stood there, she froze because what she was seeing in front of her, she couldn't, she couldn't make sense of, right? So what she saw was four individuals, two very small uh, she thought they were bear cubs initially. That's why when she froze, she didn't realize they weren't bears. The two smaller ones that looked like bear cubs because they were hunched over on all fours or whatever, they stood up and then took off into the brush. And she noticed that when they took off running, uh, there was another dog uh, that was dragged by one of them, right? So... She she's kind of stuck watching this unfold in front of her trying to figure out what she's looking at and the other two She said were about the same size uh, She didn't know how tall they were but much taller than her very wide uh, She said they look like cavemen like uh, Cavemen without loins cloths, you know uh, I asked if she could tell if it was male female and you know, she just said they were just there She she had no other description other than they look like cavemen and their faces were dark and she said she stood there for a second and then slowly was turning the rifle and you know this rifle she couldn't fully put up on her shoulder she had to kind of tuck it under her armpit because she was too small to shoulder it properly so she swung it under her armpit and faced it towards these two creatures and they bolted different directions like like gone gone and she thought again she was losing her mind 
She didn't know what to do. She retreats into the house, shuts the door, uh, drops the gun on the floor, and retreats into a corner behind the wood stove and just sits there quietly. She was crying. Uh, she started, you know, she started saying prayers. Now, at the time she was saying these prayers, it wasn't uh, an actual prayer to Jesus or anything like that. It was, she was just asking for help. God help me. God help me. And as she was sitting there, bam, bam, she starts hearing this pounding going on. And it sounds like it's opposite side of the room on the outside of the cabin. This banging is happening. And she's petrified. She's froze up. And as she's sitting there, she said that she got the overwhelming sense that she needed to stand up for herself, right? Uh, she says she doesn't know where it came from. It was just in that moment. She stood up, walked over, grabbed the rifle, opened the door. And she said when she opened the door, one of the taller ones, she doesn't know which one. And she's assuming it was one of them because that's what she just saw moments ago. Was standing by the smokehouse and was halfway in it. She turned the rifle and bam, fired a shot. This thing fell to the ground, rolled out of there, stood up and took off running towards the river. Now, when it took off running towards the river, she heard screaming from somewhere else. It wasn't screaming from the one she just shot. She heard screaming from up on the ridge behind the cabin. And as she's standing there kind of in shock, like, holy crap, you know, and she's trying to work that the lever action sheet unchambered the round but she was having a hard time closing it back up because it was pinched up in her coat and so she was working that kind of looking down at that and not watching totally around her and then she heard this thump 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 right and as she's looking she's just shutting it putting another round in it and this thing runs by one of the smaller ones runs by right just right through the dog houses right past them taking off down towards the river she didn't know what to do but she was emboldened like you better run you know you better run she goes down the steps hangs that left to go down the trail and as she does so she sees the other one coming out onto the trail and taking the the smaller one off to the right so the one of the larger ones comes off from the left gets a hold of the smaller one running by and they move off to the right of the trail and it's thick brush, she can't see what they were doing. And she could see the one she just shot further down the trail. It stopped moving, it was just standing there. And so she decides, I'm, I'm gonna shoot it again and starts walking down the trail that direction. She said in that moment, all fear was blocked out. Uh, she was, it was like tunnel vision. She was gonna, she was gonna shoot this one again that was just in the smokehouse, right? She said she got about two, three steps and then she heard a loud, loud howling kind of scream coming from the one down the trail. Now, where she stopped was just where the brush was starting to get heavier outside of where they cleared the area for this cabin, right? And she said when she stopped there, she got down on one knee to hold the rifle and try to aim down the sights. And she was having a hard time with it because she couldn't quite, you know, handle it good enough to to be able to get a good sight picture or whatever. So she said she stood up and calmly started walking that way again. This The whole time that's happening, the scream is happening. This thing is bellowing a scream real loud. And as she's going down the trail, she hears off to her right, she hears the other one with the little one. And there's weird, uh, she said it sounded like Yupik, but she couldn't tell what they were saying. And it was kind of that murmuring again. And she said she's listening to that, but she was focused on the one she could see. And she wanted to, you know, go over there and shoot it again, which, you know, hey, pff, I'm, damn. So as she's as she's going down the trail, she said she was very, very focused, like, to a dumb level. She Those are her words. She said, I was being very, very dumb. She got about 20 feet into the thicker brush going down this trail. And she noticed it was where she had dropped the bucket not too much earlier. And you got to understand, this isn't just right over there. This is a good, a good little distance. She could see this thing still on the trail further down. She got down on a knee again, picked it up, bam, fired a shot. And she said when she shot the second time, this thing kind of crumpled down, jumped up, kind of frog hopped a couple times and jumped into the river. 
and you know she again was working that action and you know held it out a little further away so she was able to operate it properly so she got another round in there and she heard that movement off to her right explode and the the smaller one and the, one of the bigger ones takes off across the trail out of view she only saw it briefly when it was on the trail quickly out of view and howling sound going on she said when there was a chorus of howling at least three individuals and she suspects it was two smaller ones and a larger one just by some of it was super high pitch and the other had a more of a bellow to it and immediately she froze and turned around and went right back to the cabin she said when she got to the cabin steps she was shaking real hard and everything was like so surreal um, she said the greens and all the different hues of green seemed to be very vibrant and bright and she she felt herself going into shock she didn't know what it was at the time but being older now and explaining it she realized you know she was going into shock at that moment she sat down on the second step from the bottom and she was holding the rifle between her hands and she was rocking and crying you know not knowing what the hell to do and she said she sat there a good while um, there was other noises that happened she said that you know that were down by the river but she she couldn't make it out she would just hear it kind of notice it nothing nearby so she just went back to what she was doing she said about uh, after that last noise she heard that got her attention she said it had to have been 45 minutes to an hour something like that she hears a skiff and she hears a skiff coming down river and the only people that usually came down river were some you know the closest neighbors come check on her right and so she sat there for a minute given time listening for the motor to get closer because she wanted to go and talk to somebody but she was scared of what just happened and so she gets up when she assumes she's got time and she'll walk down and there'll be someone to meet her there because she heard the boat slow down and pulling up by where they'd tie off skiffs so she started on down there and she said every step she took was heavier than the last one it was she was at by the time she got down by the riverbank she was using that that 4570 as kind of like a crutch to keep herself up because she said she felt so so heavy and i, I personally felt that feeling it's hard to fight so she said when she got down there, she recognized one of the neighbors was up on the riverbank. He had a rifle in his hands. His had a scope. And uh, it was his moose rifle or whatever. And she kind of knelt down and was leaning onto this 4570. And watching him, the neighbor, was pointing the rifle off to her left. And he was just looking through the scope, you know. And then he turns, he sees her, lifts the, you know, of course, stops what he's doing and runs over to her she said when he came up his eyes were real real big and he goes that thing's over there that thing's over there right he says come on come on you're coming with me come on helps her up and they walk down to where the skiff is he took the rifle from her and helped her you know because you know she was going through it man uh just the shock was sitting in heavy she was shaking really hard she said she felt so cold but hot at the same time they got her to the skiff uh, her neighbor's wife helped her in and their oldest son was with him they both were out of the skiff at this point while she's tending to bernie asking her what's going on them to get up on the riverbank she said and was out of view she didn't she didn't know what was going on she sat there in shock trying to explain what was going on but nothing was coming out just she would continuously sob a few minutes later, she doesn't know exactly how much time because she was severely traumatized at this point. She watches them come back over and they're kind of mumbling to each other up on the riverbank. She couldn't hear what they were saying. They jump into the skiff, they fire up, and they take her up to their house. She said when they got to their house, she was coming out of the fog of just trauma, right? Well, what she heard him saying was is that they saw when they pulled up they saw one larger one and two smaller ones helping one of them off into the brush and they're having a hard time because the one kept falling the one kept falling they said and they watched that for a little bit until they were out of sight right now this isn't all that far from their house it's it's not that far 
so you know they're concerned well as she was sitting there being doctored to by the neighbor's wife and consoled and all that kind of stuff they took off again in their skiff to go down there right uh when they went down there they they gathered up some of her stuff some clothes for her uh some of her personal belongings and what they did was is they unchained the dogs that were left there was like four four of them left at this point something like that unchained them and had them jump in the skiff the dogs followed willingly and uh, all, all excuse me all except one one took off running just took off and the other three followed them got in the skiff they brought her belongings back and they said when they got back there that the when they went to go inside the front door had been left open but they saw a small set of wet footprints and a large set of wet footprints and it smelled real bad inside the cabin the stove had been pushed over and the the sink that was attached to a makeshift counter had been ripped out thrown out a window totally destroyed the window in front of the where the sink area was uh, there was a burrow or a, like a dresser that was knocked over uh, they had to flip that over to get her clothes out and the place was quasi trashed um, and you know they didn't know what to make of it they're like what the hell so she tells them it was a hairy man they all have a discussion about the hairy man and stuff and you know she had a really hard time um, this was 50 years ago like she had a really hard time expressing some of the details this to get the details I did it, it took a very long time um, you gotta understand she's in her 80s now uh, she no longer lives in Alaska and it was a um, one of her relatives had mentioned the channel to her and you know she watched a couple of the episodes and it took her a while to reach out and then it took a while to to get the complete story so I want to thank Bernie for for doing that because it was not easy for her again this this former homestead was on the Yukon I guess someone else is there now um one of her distant relatives she didn't want to say exactly where but it, it's it's on the Yukon River and she said she had talked to those same neighbors over the years off and on you know when telephones came more prevalent and all that kind of stuff she reached out and she talked to them and uh come to find out their oldest son went missing uh she said about five years after the incident five years uh, he went out to go caribou hunting and just was gone you know and so it's like you know you know and she quasi blames herself like maybe something she did back then caused him to disappear and i was like whoa whoa you know you don't know for sure so don't don't beat yourself up like that right um you know some of these things that happen to people out in the wilds is very hard for the average person to grasp being in a situation like that and until you've been in those shoes I, I would I would refrain from passing any judgment as far as you know I've heard it before people be like well you shot at them so you cause problems well no that's not necessarily the case when they're killing your critters and everything talking is done as far as I'm concerned I mean but anyway I, I want to thank Bernie for sharing that um, it wasn't easy for her and it took took quite a few calls to get that that whole experience and when I was when I was sharing with her um, you know what what I picked up from her chain of events and stuff I was kind of telling her her own story back to her uh, to make sure I had it right you know and uh, that was difficult too because she kept breaking down crying and she's essentially reliving it you know um, I want to thank her bless her heart uh, thank her for sharing that it wasn't easy and uh, what else was there there was something but I, I'll figure it out and I'll, I'll bring it up on the next video but again thanks for joining me it's Fred in Alaska we'll catch you on the next one